when we talk about throwing a second base, you know, are most of you guys in here in high school or younger age guys, or where do we coach? Younger 12. So, okay. Um, when we talk about throwing a second, so some of you guys are playing on uh, the bigger field, I said with 90 foot bases, and some of you are a little bit younger guys uh, or smaller bases. Um, We've got a key on accuracy. Man, accuracy is the key. It doesn't matter if you throw it 95 miles an hour, if you throw it in the center field every time, you're not going to throw anybody out. So we have to work on accurate throws. Too many guys, I think, are consumed with the stopwatch. They say, oh, I'm throwing a 195 this, I'm throwing a 18 this, and then, and really, it's, it's not realistic. Uh, because when I put them on a stopwatch, it's, it's a lot different than, than what they told me anyway. Um, but it, it's not about quickness. Again, it, it, it's very important to be quick, but if you don't throw where you want to, we're not throwing anybody out. So we want to work on our accuracy, uh, and, and don't get too caught up with the stopwatch. I think that's a downfall for a lot of guys. Too many guys just key off the, this is my time, and it's not realistic because they, they did it in the showcase, and they were cheating, their body was cocked to the side, there was no batter, they knew they were going to throw the ball to second base, uh, there was no guesswork, no reading to hit the runner. Um, so it's, it's just not as realistic as we want it to be a lot of times. Um, so don't get too consumed with the stopwatch. That's one thing I'll say there. But when we throw to second base, and, and for, especially great for the younger guys, there, there's really, we say there's three different sets of footwork that we can use. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think that, that all three are great. Uh, a lot of guys will you could use kind of a hybrid method where they put two together uh, or do something kind of in between. But if I'm going to teach it to a guy who's never taught before, or even our guys, I have them use a jab step method, <coughs> some of you are probably familiar with. Um, the first method that I'll say, and uh, I'll tell you why I don't like it, is kind of a replacement method that you guys need before, where we kind of use our, our right foot to replace our left foot, and my body ends up in the right-handed batter's box side uh, of the catcher's box. Uh, and I really don't gain any ground, any ground forward. I'm not gaining any distance to second base that way. I'm kind of losing uh, my momentum there. So the second way we'll talk about is our jab step. Uh, the first way we'll talk about our replacement. I replace that way, my momentum's going to the third base dugout. Um, I, I like guys to take a small jab step. And, and what I key off of is, is taking a small step right under our chin. Um, a lot of guys, they, they think that they got to get too much leg into it and put too much arm into it. And they take a huge jab step that's two or three feet. Um, and ultimately, that's, that's time that it's wasted when the ball could be in the air because the, the ball's traveling a lot quicker then. So we want to take a small jab step to our right foot directly under our chin. Uh, our momentum uh, should take us straight to second base. Okay, again, like I said before, a lot of times guys, they, they, their momentum's going in a right-hander batter's box or sometimes even a left-hander batter's box uh, on, a low, on a pitch that's low and away. Uh, but I want to stay behind home plate as much as I can. Now, with that said, it's important that I step in my secondary stance when runners are on base where I'm not going to step on home plate. Okay, there's two things that I say we should set up. Uh, anytime somebody's on base, especially a base stealing threat, I have to set up where I can see the base runner. Uh, a lot of times guys key off, you know, my first baseman should be yell, runner, or go, or there he goes, or now, or something when he runs, and I want you to be able to see the runner. If that means getting a little bit further back, or a little bit further up, uh, you have to be able to see him. I tell our guys that if anybody ever comes back to the dugout and they don't throw the ball to second base because the first baseman didn't yell, uh, that's not gonna be a very fun day for them. Because uh, it's not the first baseman's responsibility to throw them out, it's just the catcher's responsibility. So one set up, where you can see the base runner. Two, you've got to set up, and this comes with knowing your body and, and practicing knowing your footwork. Set up where you're not going to set up, step on home plate. Because you know, if you step on home plate, then you slip and fall, and the ball goes in the outfield. Uh, and that happens a lot. You, you know, pretty careless. I'd rather you stand you know, another eight inches back, or if the batter's in the front of the box, uh, go up to where you do your footwork, you'll straddle home plate. Um, but, but we do want our body and momentum in line with second base and in line with pitching rubber uh, to stay behind home plate. Uh, as far as you know, our footwork, I, I try to keep it pretty simple. Uh, I want to use a short jab step, my right foot under my chin, and then get my body lined up towards second base. Uh, and as far as my upper body, I like to keep, I really say two things. So when we do our exchange, when we take our ball out of our mitt into our throwing hand, I want to have a, a quick exchange, which kind of goes without saying, but I have a high exchange. Uh, when I exchange the ball low, or on my belly button, or around my chest, it just takes time. It's a, it's a lot bigger. Some people say C or loop or R. It takes a lot more time that way. I'd rather exchange high by my ear or my back shoulder. Um, I'm going to get the ball out a, a lot more quickly that way. Um, and then the last thing I have on this slide is, is ball should be thrown with true backspin. Uh, you, you know, a lot of times, especially younger guys, we even got guys that have problems with They throw cutters or, or two seamers and the ball doesn't have great spin. Uh, one, it doesn't go as straight as you want it to. 
Um, so it's, it's off target more and we have less likely shot to throw the guy out. And then when it's not, when it's not a four seam ball, it has true backspin and it's curving. Everybody here knows, knows or has heard before that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So if I can throw it straight, it's going to take time off my, off my throw to second as opposed to if I throw that ball that runs back in. So one, it's going to be uh, more accurate down to my second base, it'll be easier for them to handle, and it's going to take time off my throw because the ball's not traveling a further distance. So I've got to have a true backspin on it. Um, if you look at throwing to second base from the side, uh, the first pitch on the left, that's right as he catches it. Uh, he, he's, he's starting to turn his mitt back towards his ear. Um, and you can see he's in a good secondary stance. His, his thighs are parallel with the ground. His right foot's uh, slightly cheated back, but his shoulders are still square. Uh, and then you see where he's transferring. That's the transfer I talk about uh, where it's, it's, it's around our back shoulders, around our ear. Uh, we, we never want to transfer. It doesn't matter the location of the pitch. You never want to transfer it around your belly button or around your chest. You want to be a little bit higher than that. And then I know it's difficult to see in the picture all the time, uh, but he, it's a pretty short jab right there. He did a good job where he didn't get too much control. But again, that's what like, guys want to do, uh, especially for some younger guys. I know it's difficult when you are in a different size field every two years. You're playing, uh, and then you play, you get comfortable with the field, and then a year later, the field gets bigger. The guys try to do more to get more on it. They use a lot more eggs, and it takes a lot more time to get the ball. I would rather just get in there, even bouncing sometimes, on the throw like that. And then even the front. Again, that's kind of difficult to say said before. Uh, the first inch, but I'm sorry, the pitch on the left is the same as before. That's right, impact. Uh, you see our catcher there has his hand behind his mitt, protected up high. And then on the second picture, uh, I think it does a good job. It shows him throwing behind home plate. He's, he's in a good athletic position. Uh, he's fairly low. His knees are bent. Um, both his elbows are in line, just like the pitcher mechanics would be, uh, throwing straight to his target. His eyes and his head are, are pretty parallel, uh, and even with the ground. Um, now, all the drills that we do, uh, the website I gave you before, uh, I have video, instead of showing you all the videos here, all our videos are on my website, whether it's throwing, blocking, pop flies, play to the plate, whatever. So uh, if you want to check out some of those, you know, feel free. Um, and, and with that said, uh, that, that's really about all I've got. Um, I kind of want to be short and sweet, and I want to open it up for questions.